Hello and welcome to another Revit tutorial. Today this is the first low code tutorial. Because what we are going to do is we are running our Revit graph in as a Node.js application. So we are running it as a backend application. This makes sense, for example, if we want to um, have something built something cool, if we now want to add it to our website, or we want some, yeah, even put it to the web and have it triggered automatically, or you want to put just a UI on top of it or anything like that. So there's lots of lots of reasons to do this. Um, issue is the documentation about this is I think it's good for devs. It's very bad for non devs because uh, it's not easy. First of all, there is a the um, an example project by Rivet itself, but it's fairly complex. There is already a shed front end and the back end and multiple parts and it's very hard to figure out why it is working or how it is working, I think, for a non-dev and find the parts you need. And the second thing is, um, yeah, Rivet is a TypeScript project and TypeScript is, yeah, is a, is a language you first need to build. So first uh, you need, if you want to run this, you first need to build JavaScript files out of it and then you need to run those. So um, this is already not that simple to execute. Um, and it can be a bit tricky to set this up for the first time if you have no idea uh, what I'm just talking about. And um, if you're a dev, I mean, you will probably not need this. But if uh, you want something super simple to get started with a few lines of code, then uh, yeah, let's use my Git. I created a GitHub project here for you, which just does just that. It's just executing this graph here. Super plain, super simple. And yeah, I will show you how to install it now. Link is in the description and the whole documentation is also on this project page. So generally, um, I did it in a way that this runs with Visual Studio Code. So the building of the application is uh, being done there. So you need this. Just go to the website and download it. It's an application, so it's easy to install. Then, um, yeah, you need Node and Node Package Manager. Also, this is an auto installer, so there should not be any need for me to show it to you. Just make sure that in the installation process with the selection that also the NPM package manager will be installed. This is important. And then optionally, you can install GitHub. And then, yeah, we are already uh, prepared for everything. Now we are, uh, we need to clone the repository. So basically our project here, and there's a no coder way. You can just download the zip file and execute it and uh, extract it in some folder. Um, or we can use the, the typical dev way. So if you installed GitHub, we can just press copy here. And I mean, let me quickly show you. And then in the terminal, you would go to the folder you want it installed. I'm already there and you would type in git clone and add this link here. And now, um, yeah, it's basically downloading it and created us um, a new folder with this project. But you don't need to do that. You can just use the zip file as well. So let's go to Visual Studio Code. Um, okay, second here. And now, yeah, you should have a welcome page, something like this. So let's open uh, new projects. I mean, you can also do it here. It's like file and open folder. This is always a good idea for opening projects to open not just uh, the, the files directly, but the whole folder. And now we can go to project and we can go to our um, the GitHub uh, repository we just downloaded, which has the name Rivet Node Basic Example. And we are going to open it. And now there's two simple things we need to do first. I mean, it's all written in the, in the readme as well in the documentation, so you don't need to remember. We need to go here into the VS Code folder. So this is basically our instructions how to run the project. And what we can see here, there's also some environment uh, variables being set here. And if you run um, the graph from outside of Rivet uh, UI, you need to set the OpenAI key also outside of it. And this is a place where we can now set it. So what you need to do is you replace this string here with your OpenAI key. And then you're going to rename this file um, to just launch.json. So I will not do this now because I don't want to show you my OpenAI key. I mean, that's the whole reason we have this in here. So I will just copy my working, paste my working file in here. And now I showed it to you. Okay. So I guess I will just deactivate it after the video and create a new one. Um, but basically, so let's assume we renamed it. Then 
this was look, would look like this. So we would now have a launch of JSON with our working API, our open API key, and then a task JSON. And of course, we save this file. And then there's one more step. We are going to the terminal and we are pressing new terminal. And now in the terminal, which automatically opens in our folder here, we type in, this is a one-time thing, npm, so no package manager, and install. And this automatically reads um, the necessary packages from our package JSON, which is um, actually the um, yeah is actually our uh, uh, yeah yeah ironclad ribbit node that we need to run the program, and it installs them. So now we have a node modules folder here, and everything has been installed for us. And now. We could already run it, but before we run our um, application, let's take one look into the file. So what do we actually have here? So we have two folders, and this is important. This is what I mentioned before. We have one folder. This is source with our TS, with our TypeScript files. So this is actually what uh, we are, where we are going to change the code. And then we have a distribution. This is automatically generating files from our from those files in here. So don't just don't care about the distribution folder we only need the source folder and now we have this one file in here rivet.typescript and this which you see there is we're importing one module too much here we don't need it but it doesn't matter um, what this is doing is pretty simple uh, let's take a short look so first of all we are importing um, some part we need from uh, from the rivet node um, repository so it's run graph and file and start debugger server i will show you what the debugger server is doing then we are actually loading the debugger server and we're doing a wait so that uh, we yeah make sure that it will finish loading before we start the graph and then basically we have two variables here and that's super simple one is our um, rivet project file we want to open and we can see it's lying here in this folder so we open an example dot rivet um, dash project. So we could of course ch let's change this, and then what graph we are opening in the project. This could also be an ID. So if um, the issue with taking the names is if you would rename it, it might break. But the issue with the IDs is you will actually need to go into the file and open it to find it. So. But it's, as you can see, it's a YAML file, so we can read it. So for example, we can find here that the example graph has this idea. So we could also now put this ID in instead and have it more stable um, as a more stable selector. But let's keep it simple. Let's use the name um, for now. So let's go back. Then what this is doing, it's actually taking the OpenAI key from our environment, which we just put into the launch JSON file before. And then we are yeah, we are running a graph and a file. So we are loading our project, which is defined here. We are running this graph. And just just so that you know, if, if you have subgraphs and so on in this, this will also all be running. So it will start at the main graph. And if you build a whole process that loops to, that goes through 20 graphs, that will all be running. So it's just the starting point. Basically the same as a rivet where you press the start button. Then. Uh, we are defining the remote debugger as our debugger server. You will see in a second what this does. And we are defining inputs. Let's take a short look at the rivet graph we are booting up. For that to make sense, let's open it. So also in our basic example, we have the example project here. And we have our example graph. And this is super simple. I mean, it's just a demo. So basically, we have a graph input, which is called prompt. So what the user wants to know, then we put this into a chat with GPT-35 and the response goes to a graph output called response. And as you can see, I mean, this would not work if I would run it like this because we, we I mean, it does, but we are not inputting anything. Now we have no inputs. So it's not really doing anything. Okay. And let's run this. Let's go to our um let's go here and i'm sorry i need to close one of my visual studio so that we can get the right one here and let's run the graph 
So now that we can see it's uh, that it's running and in the debug console where we see our output. At the moment it's still running, it takes a bit. And yeah, uh, we are getting uh, a poem about, a short poem about the dog. So um, I skipped a bit ahead because what we defined here is as our inputs. I mean, you saw that we have the graph input called prompt and we saw that we also defined an input here and we call the prompt and we put our prompt in here. And then at the end, when this function is running, we will get the result here. And from the result, we are getting our graph output variable named response. That's how we named it in Rivet and from that the value. And then we are just logging it to the console currently. And that's how we are now having our results from Rivet in Visual Studio and in our application and we could use it. Okay, back to Rivet. So now you, you see obviously nothing happened here, but it's the pretty cool thing is we can now say we want to connect this remote debugger we were talking about. So let's press this button and let's just press connect. So if we don't change any of the settings, then this will always be the same. And now it's trying to reconnect to our remote debugger. And now let's go back to Visual Studio and let's now write a short poem about a cat and save it and run it. And now we can actually go to Rivet and we can see that it's uh, how it's working. See, we can see that we now have connected and we can see what it's doing. So we have our poem here. We can see what uh, ChatGPT put out and our output. Of course, with such a simple example here, there is not much to see, but if you have a bit more complex graph and you actually want to know what's happening, then this is really cool. Just imagine you have a chat application in your website running on Rivet and lots of people are chatting with it, you can actually um, start this remote debugger and you can look live at people using the application. You can see what they type in, you can see what they do, and you can yeah, you can see if there are any issues with it. So this is a pretty cool thing actually. Okay, let's go back once more. So basically, I mean, that's already all you need to know for this first video. Um, if you want to, to adjust this, just change it to your graph, and your project and your graph. Um, you might, of course, have to check if you need uh, have graph inputs, then you need to adjust them. Maybe you don't have graph inputs and you could just leave this empty. This will also work, but then, of course, you will have no inputs. Um, and maybe you don't have graph outputs too. Maybe you just want to run a graph and you don't even need init outputs. You can remove this console output, of course, as well. Um, yeah, this is just the starting point. Um, there's more to show. So if you're interested, we could look at um, how to use the external functions or the on user event or the context, um, as well as, of course, how to maybe set up an API for this. So there's lots of things we could do, but yeah, please let me know if you are interested in that. And for now, I hope this will help you getting your own Rivet application started and have the starting point you need without having any issues because of the yeah, TypeScript setup or anything like that. So as always, please like and subscribe and see you in the next video. Bye.